Throughout the Cold War, American intelligence agencies used a number of unusual tools to spy on the Soviet Union, tools both large and small. The Tassina camera fit into a cigarette box, making it easy to sneak into meetings unnoticed. A fake silver dollar opened up to offer a hiding space for small secret documents. The giant spy satellite known as Big Bird took photos of the USSR from space. But perhaps the most unconventional tool of the Cold War wasn't some high-tech device at all, but rather a common animal. The humble pigeon was a major asset to espionage. Thanks to their homing ability, which allows them to navigate back to a specific home location from hundreds of miles away, pigeons made the perfect undercover operatives for gathering intelligence behind enemy lines. In the 1970s, the CIA decided to take advantage of these navigational instincts by strapping miniature cameras to their spy pigeons. This was Operation Takana, and its details remained fully classified until 2019. The battery-operated cameras took pictures automatically at predetermined intervals as the pigeons flew. The cameras were attached to harnesses the pigeons wore and could take around 140 pictures. In trial runs, about half the photos were good quality and often provided higher detail than satellites or reconnaissance planes, since pigeons fly so much closer to the ground. The real trick was finding a way to release the spy pigeons behind enemy lines without anyone noticing. Methods included releasing the birds from inside a thick trench coat, from a hole in the floor of a parked car, and even from the window of a car driving 50 miles an hour. Ultimately, how many pigeons provided information on the Cold War remains unknown. These documents are still classified. What's clear is that pigeons have an incredible sense of direction, one that humans have been relying on for millennia. But how is it that a pigeon can be so reliable? So reliable that they've been trusted with some of the most important intelligence of the 20th century. How can we be so sure that pigeons always know where to go? Despite some commonly held beliefs, pigeons are, in fact, real. And although the common pigeon is now a familiar sight around the world, the bird's native range included Europe, North Africa, and Asia. Kept in captivity, they can live for more than 15 years. And the birds are able to fly as far as 700 miles or 1,100 kilometers a day, traveling as fast as 90 miles or 140 kilometers per hour. And on top of this, the birds always seem to know how to make their way back home. Taken all together, these qualities have made the birds highly valuable to humans for thousands of years. In ancient Egypt, pigeons were released from incoming ships to announce the arrival of important visitors. In 2350 BC, King Sargon of Akkad had his messengers carry homing pigeons so that, if the messenger was captured, the pigeon could fly back and alert the government. Pigeons served as a mail service throughout the Middle Ages, and were the fastest courier service available until the invention of the telegraph. Even after new communication technology was invented, pigeons still had a place of honor within the military. During World War I, both sides of fighters used pigeons to deliver messages, because telegraph wires were vulnerable to attack. In World War II, the British used nearly a quarter of a million birds across multiple branches of the defense services. Birds of prey along the coast were even culled so that the pigeons could return home without being attacked by predators. British intelligence also ran a secret pigeon service in which thousands of birds were dropped over occupied Europe with questionnaires attached to their legs. Those working with the resistance against Nazi Germany could then return the pigeons with information about German radar stations, rocket launch sites, and troop movement. One pigeon came back with a 12-page intelligence report sent directly to Winston Churchill. Pigeons were so valuable during the war effort that they received medals for their service. Throughout World War II, the Dickin Medal was awarded to 53 animals that displayed conspicuous gallantry and devotion to duty. And 32 of those 53 medals went to pigeons, including the American bird G.I. Joe. 
And during the Cold War, spy pigeons were released in Moscow to gather intelligence on priority targets within the Soviet Union. A 1976 report explained that the shipyards at Leningrad would be one such target, the area where the Soviet Union built their most advanced submarines. Unfortunately for us, the secrets the pigeons may have revealed are still classified. However, we do know that the process the military used to train these pigeons to spy was fairly straightforward. As long as pigeons are raised in a specific loft, a building where they spend their first few weeks of life without leaving, then progressively taken farther and farther away from the loft, they naturally learn to navigate back to the lofts from almost any location, even when they're hundreds of miles away. Intelligence services can thus release pigeons in a location where they will cross over a target of interest. But how do they accomplish such a remarkable feat? It's a question scientists have been trying to answer for decades. A question that's been one of the biggest mysteries of science in the last century. Some researchers proposed that the pigeons were using a solar compass. Essentially, that they know the direction the sun appears from the position of their loft, and no matter where they are, they can use that bearing to fly back in the correct direction. One study tested this hypothesis by shifting the internal clocks of the birds, basically by giving them artificial jet lag. To do this, the pigeons were kept in a light-proof room and exposed to periods of light and darkness that differed from the actual period of light and dark outside. When those same pigeons were released back to fly to their lofts, they departed at the wrong angle, they flew in the direction that their internal clocks predicted, and not the sun's actual position. The experiment showed that the pigeons definitely do use the sun as part of their navigational system, but it's not the only thing they use. Considering the fact that the birds use the sun to navigate, you might think their eyesight is equally important. Based on their repeated flights, it does seem like pigeons develop routes at least partially based on major landmarks. But when researchers fitted the birds with frosted glasses that impaired vision, the pigeons were still able to return to their lofts from unfamiliar spots over 30 miles away. Though it did seem like sight was pretty important for the final approach to the loft. Other researchers proposed that the pigeons used the Earth's magnetic fields to navigate. In the planet's molten metallic outer core, the flowing liquid generates electric currents, and the rotation of the Earth on its axis causes the electric current to form a magnetic shield around the planet. Scientists hypothesized that pigeons used these magnetic fields to navigate, but didn't quite understand how the birds might sense that magnetic direction. Then, researchers developed an experiment in which pigeons were placed in a wooden tunnel with feeder platforms at either end and coils of wire around the outside. The pigeons were trained to go to one end of the tunnel if the coils were switched on to generate a magnetic field. But if the pigeons had magnets attached to their beaks, or if the upper beak was anesthetized, the pigeons' skills were impaired. From this, they suggested the birds had tiny particles of magnetite in their beaks, an iron oxide that is magnetized, as the name suggests, which allows them to sense magnetic fields around them. But another researcher thought that detecting magnetic fields might be less important than a pigeon's ability to smell. In a 2006 study, this scientist assembled 48 young homing pigeons. In half of them, the nerves were cut that helped the brain detect magnetic fields. In the other half, the nerves that carried olfactory signals to the brain were cut. All of the birds were released 30 miles from their loft. Of those that could no longer detect magnetic fields, all but one made it home within 24 hours. As for the birds with no sense of smell, only four made it back home. More recently, a multidisciplinary team in Italy mapped the airborne volatile organic compounds found around a pigeon's home. These included the smells emitted by trees, the sea, and even industrial processes. The researchers used a plane flying 500 feet above the Earth, the average altitude at which a pigeon flies, to aid in their measurements. They then constructed a map that reflected wind speed and direction, showing exactly how pigeons might make their own mental map of their home based on the way it smells. 
scientists now think that pigeons probably use some combination of different variables to find their way back home. And yet, even with all these clues to help them navigate, the birds still sometimes get lost. Sometimes they get lost repeatedly when being released from the same site. This is known as release site bias, and it's puzzled scientists for years. One geophysicist named John Hagstrom decided to go back and re-examine experiments conducted by the Cornell-based biologist W.T. Keaton. Between 1968 and 1987, Keaton released pigeons from three sites in upstate New York that were between 45 and 88 miles away from their loft. The pigeons regularly failed to properly orient themselves from one of the release sites called Jersey Hill. That is, except for on one specific day. What could cause the birds to get constantly lost from this site, except for one time? The magnetic fields of the area shouldn't change, and neither should the smells, even if the wind shifted now and again. To explain this weird phenomenon, Hagstrom came up with a theory, and a strange one. He thought it was perhaps the sounds of an area that the pigeons could follow home. To test this, he built an acoustic map of each of the sites on every day of the birds' flights. Using a complex computer program that reflected atmospheric conditions, Hagstrom looked at the production of infrasound. These are low-frequency acoustic waves below the range of human hearing, less than 20 hertz. The noises can be produced by minute vibrations in the planet's surface, such as industrial activity, wind turbines, storms, lightning, or even tectonic plates. And these sound waves can travel for thousands of miles. Pigeons can detect these infrasounds all the way down to 0.05 hertz. And Hagstrom had a suspicion the birds were using these noises to navigate back home. Sure enough, his modeling showed that the precise geography of the Jersey Hill site, the one where the birds consistently failed to find their way home, prevented the birds from hearing the infrasounds from the area of their home loft. The only day the birds were successfully able to return home from Jersey Hill was when atmospheric conditions changed the way the sounds were transmitted, allowing the birds to hear their way home. Although pigeons aren't perfect navigators from every location, their abilities are still something humans have respected and made use of for centuries. While city dwellers might think of pigeons as no more than an urban nuisance, it's clear that the birds deserve far more credit than we give them. Pigeons, despite their derpiness, have even been credited with saving hundreds of lives. During World War II, an Italian village was liberated by Allied forces in October of 1943, far earlier than expected. An air attack had been scheduled to subdue German positions later that same day. Now that the village had been freed, the people there were now in danger of being killed by friendly fire. The pigeon G.I. Joe was released from the village with a message to call off the attack. He flew 20 miles in 20 minutes, reaching Allied lines just as the bombers were preparing to take off. His actions saved at least 100 Allied soldiers' lives, and the lives of countless civilians. During war, communication is key. World War II was largely won because of the Allies' superior ability to transmit and interpret constantly changing information. And for the Battle of Britain, the first battle waged entirely by air, this fact could not be more true. In the series Battle of Britain, exclusively on Nebula, Made by our partner channel, Real Engineering, you can learn about the invention of the doubting system, which brought together technology, ground defenses, and fighter aircraft in a revolution in communication operations. The entire Battle of Britain series is the peak of any of the productions our team has made so far. The 3D animations are so good that I actually can't believe just a few people made it, and the storytelling is captivating. I thought I knew a decent amount about World War II, but the details in this series has blown my mind. The original content on Nebula is better than it has any right to be. From original current events documentaries, daily news, 
a live action interstate game show with Brian from Real Engineering and Sam from Wendover Productions, and a feature length film coming soon from the incredible Patrick Willems. The exclusive content just constantly surprises and impresses me. And there is more being added all the time. You can watch our previous video about the incredible intelligence of crows, or watch Real Engineering's latest video about the mystery of the Concorde airplane crash.